Summary of the French Lieutenant's Woman by John Fowles Charles Smithson and Ernestina Freeman are making plans to get married in 1867. Both Charles and Ernestina come from wealthy families. Charles is an upper-class amateur paleontologist, while Ernestina is the daughter of a wealthy draper. One day, they are going along the beach in Lyme Regis when they see a strange woman looking out to sea. It is said that she fell in love with a French lieutenant, and now she is patiently waiting for him to come back. Sarah Woodruff was hired as a servant by Mrs. Pulteney a year before. Mrs. Pulteney was rich and religious, and she was also a French lieutenant's woman. Mrs. Pulteney is a horrible person who worries about going to hell. She thinks that helping Sarah will save her own life. She knows that Sarah helped a French officer get better after his ship sank. Sarah thought he was going to marry her, but he left. Since then, Sarah has been left out. Charles goes out to look for fossils right after he sees Sarah on the beach. He ends up in a strange desert called the Undercliff, where he finds Sarah sleeping in the grass. When she wakes up, she sees him looking at her. Sarah walks in the Undercliff a lot, even though Mrs. Pulteney told her not to because the area is known for bad things. Sarah has kept walking there, but she is more careful not to be seen now. Charles, Ernestina, and Ernestina's aunt, Mrs. Tranter, go to Mrs. Pulteney's house the next day to see Sarah. Sam, who works for Charles, is falling in love with Mary, who works for Mrs. Tranter. A few days later, Charles goes back to the Undercliff to look for fossils and meets Sarah there. He tells her that Mrs. Tranter would like to help her because she is a good person. Sarah tells her that the French officer has gotten married and won't be coming back for her. Charles doesn't tell Ernestina or Mrs. Tranter that he saw Sarah, even though he knows he likes her. When Charles goes to the Undercliff again, Sarah surprises him by saying she wants to tell him what happened with the French officer. She thinks she will go crazy if she can't talk to someone who cares about her. Charles says they shouldn't meet anymore because it's not right, but he finally agrees to meet her soon to hear her story. That night, Charles, Ernestina, Mrs. Tranter, and Dr. Grogan have dinner together. Charles and the doctor then have a drink and start talking about Sarah. Grogan says she is very sad and can only get better if she tells someone her story. They find out that they both agree with Charles Darwin's ideas. Charles sees Sarah again, and she tells him that she fell in love with the Frenchman Vargens and slept with him in an inn even though she knew he would never keep his word to marry her. She did it because she thinks that her life will never let her be happy, and she wanted to be a social outsider so that people would notice how much she was hurting. She and Charles see Sam and Mary making out later. As Sarah walks alone back to Lyme, she makes sure that Mrs. Pulteney's mean maid, Mrs. Fairley, sees her. Sir Robert, Charles's single uncle, calls him to his farm, Winsiat, the same day. Sir Robert tells Charles that he's getting married, but Charles thinks that Sir Robert is going to give him the land. If he has a kid, Charles won't get Winsiat or the rank of baronet from his uncle. Ernestina is angry when Charles comes back to Lyme with bad news. Then, Charles finds out that Mrs. Pulteney fired Sarah because she walked in the undercliff. Sarah has also left, but she sent Charles a note asking to meet up again. Sam is starting to notice that something is wrong, and he is thinking about blackmailing Charles so that he can open a shop with Mary, which is his dream. Charles goes to see Dr. Grogan and tells him about his talks with Sarah and the note she sent him. Both of them are afraid that she might try to kill herself. Grogan thinks Sarah wanted to get fired, and he thinks she's so desperate to influence people that she might hurt herself in the process. Grogan says that he will meet Sarah where Charles is and take her to an institution so she can get better. Grogan tells Charles about a strange hearing where a man was found guilty of threatening a family and trying to rape a girl, even though it was really the girl who made it look like he did those things. There are also stories of women hurting themselves in horrible ways to get people to do what they want. Charles is shocked, but he decides that Grogan is wrong about Sarah. At a barn in the Undercliff, Charles meets Sarah. She says she loves Charles and admits that she let Mrs. Fairley see her walking in the Undercliff so she could get fired. 
They kiss, but then Charles runs out of the barn and sees Sam and Mary outside. Charles makes them promise not to say anything and gets Sarah to agree to leave Lyme and go to Exeter. That day, against Ernestina's wishes, Charles goes to London to tell Ernestina's father that he may no longer be his uncle's child. Mr. Freeman finally agrees to let the marriage happen anyway, and he hints that Charles might one day take over his business, even though gentlemen usually don't work in trade. Charles doesn't think he can say no, but he starts to hate his future. Charles goes to his club and sees some of his wild Cambridge friends. After getting drunk, they all go to a brothel. Charles leaves instead of hiring a prostitute, but on his way home he sees a prostitute who slightly reminds him of Sarah, so he hires her. But he starts to feel sick in her apartment. As soon as he finds out her name is Sarah, he feels sick to his stomach. She is very nice to him, and when she goes to call him a cab, he cuddles her crying baby. Charles gets a note from Sarah the next morning. All it says is the name of the hotel where she is staying in Exeter. Sam tells Charles that he wants to open a shop and that he wants Charles to give him the money to do it. Charles says in the end that he would be happy to do it after he gets married. Charles and Sam take the train to Exeter and then go back to Lyme. Charles and Ernestina live happily ever after, while Mrs. Pulteney dies and goes to hell. But the narrator says this ending isn't true, it's just what Charles wanted to happen. In real life, Charles goes to Sarah's hotel when he gets to Exeter. He goes up to her room because she hurt her ankle. After some awkwardness at first, they are both hungry for each other and have sex. Charles tells her he wants to marry her, but she says no. When Charles is putting on his clothes, he sees blood on his shirt and knows that Sarah lied about Vargens because she was a virgin. He is surprised and confused, so she tells him to leave. Charles goes to church, where he learns that he doesn't have to think about the judgment of the dead and that the goal of Christianity should be to make a world where Christ can be freed from the cross. He chooses not to marry Ernestina but to marry Sarah. The next morning, Charles sends Sam to Sarah with a letter telling her that he is ending his engagement to Ernestina. If she wants to marry him, she should keep the ring he sent her. If not, she should send it back with Sam. Sam comes back with nothing. Charles goes to Lyme and tells Ernestina that he was going to marry her for the wrong reasons and that he's in love with someone else. She begs him to help her, but he won't. Charles goes looking for Dr. Grogan. Sam quits when he finds out what Charles did. After helping Ernestina, Dr. Grogan goes to see Charles and tells him how bad his acts are. He will spend the rest of his life having to prove that he made the right choice. Charles goes back to Exeter, but when he gets to Sarah's hotel, he finds that she has moved to London and left no way to get in touch with her. Charles finds out that Sam never gave his letter to the right person. The next day, the narrator sits in Charles's room on the train to London and tries to figure out what to do with him. The storyteller decides to show two different ways the story could end. Charles starts to look all over London for Sarah, but he can't find her. Charles is forced by Mr. Freeman and his lawyers to sign a statement of guilt that says he cheated on Ernestina and broke his promise to her without a good reason. He gets sad and spends a year and a half traveling around Europe, but nothing brings him happiness. In the meantime, Sam starts to do well at Mr. Freeman's shop where he works. Mary sees Sarah go into a house in Chelsea one day. Charles goes to the US and travels a lot until he gets a text from his lawyer telling him that Sarah has been found. He goes to Sarah's house, which is owned by the painter Dante Gabriel Rossetti, when he gets back to London. Sarah works for him as his helper, and for the first time, she feels like she fits. Charles is there to save her, but she doesn't want to be saved. She tells him that they can't be together, which makes him very angry. Sarah tells Charles that she's had his child right before he leaves. There seems to be some hope that they will still be a family. But the storyteller also shows another possible finish. After Charles and Sarah get into an argument, Charles thinks that Sarah is giving them a chance to be friends. He says no, so he doesn't get to see the child. He starts to understand that life is not meant to be solved, 
but to be lived through. About the author. Fowles was born into a tobacco-importing middle-class family. At the age of 13, he started going to boarding school, where he did well in sports. After two years in the Royal Marines, Fowles got his bachelor's degree in French and German at New College, Oxford. During this time, he read works by existentialists that affected him. He then taught English at a school in Greece for two years. He fell in love with Elizabeth Christie, who was married to one of his co-workers, while he was there. Elizabeth left her husband soon after she got back to England and married Fowles. Fowles taught English to foreign girls at a girls' school in London for the next 10 years. In 1963, he wrote his first book, which was called The Collector. Fowles was able to stop teaching and write full-time because of how well it did. Fowles and his wife moved to a farm in Dorset in 1965, but it was too far away from other people, so they soon moved to Lyme Regis, where Fowles would live for the rest of his life. He was the director of the Lyme Regis Museum for 10 years. Even though he wrote a lot of other books, The Magus, The French Lieutenant's Woman, and The Collector were his most well-known. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.